Welcome back to Think Tank. My name is Jay Fidel. Today, we're going to talk about global connections. We're going to talk about how concerned should Taiwan be uh, about China. Big question, looming question always. And we're going to ask, what can Taiwan do to protect itself? And for that matter, what can and should the U.S. do to protect Taiwan? And for this discussion, we have Bill Sharp, uh, who is a longtime member of our family. Uh, we know him since he was 12, and he was, he's was he been <laughs> on our show. <laughs> since he's I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bill. I'm so happy to hear you. I'm thrilled to have you here with us today. Now, tell us Thank about you. your experience, your academic contact, your lifelong interest in Taiwan. Thank you for inviting me. Tell us, tell us your level of interest in Taiwan. Well, um, uh, I got interested in Taiwan actually kind of in an indirect way. I, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was not, when I was in Vietnam, I was wondering if we're the good guys, why, why are we doing so poorly? And then I realized that there was a lot of reasons to that, but uh, the South Vietnamese government, who were our allies, supposedly, uh, had didn't have the political clout to launch a meaningful land reform. And I read someplace, uh, I, actually, I got a book uh, from the Air Force uh, Library in the Trang, um, U.S. Air Force, that is, um, that, that talked about um, the successful land reform that they had in Taiwan. So that's the, the uh, genesis of my uh, interest in Taiwan. Okay, you've been reading and writing about it, and you've been visiting, and you've been, um, you know, identified with it for as long as I know you. I've been to Taiwan 45 times. I'm going again this summer. Mm, okay. uh, I've lived in Taiwan a couple of years. Uh, a colonist of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, scholarship program. You've had projects there. You, you've done academic projects there. So right. um, I, I would right. say you're as well familiar with Taiwan on the ground as anybody I know. And I want to talk Thank to you, you about about how it's doing. You know, I mean, we have we have a country of 23 million people in the shadow of China, which has 1.4 billion, north of 1.4 billion. Um, and it seems so tiny, small, compared to this huge monolithic country just across the straits. And you say to yourself, why does China, you know, want Taiwan? Why does it want to, why does it want to take it over? Why does it want to own it? What is the problem? This is not really a threat to China at all, is it? Well, first of all, Taiwan shields Hawaii. Uh, that is, if China brought uh, Taiwan under its control, they would change the, uh, Taiwan into a huge naval base to send Navy patrols into the Pacific mm -hmm. and to um, mess with uh, U.S. interests. South China Sea would become a Chinese lake, and our allies, especially South Korea and Japan, depend upon access to the Taiwan Strait and the waters around Taiwan um, to transport Middle Eastern oil. Uh, it would disrupt the global supply chains. Uh, to uh, quote General Gregson, a former um, Assistant Secretary of Defense, Taiwan must not fall. Taiwan is the is Berlin. Taiwan is the folded cap. Hmm. Well, that's important to the U.S. But you know, the U.S. has been a little wishy-washy about um, you know promising to support Taiwan. I, it was a long time ago when uh, the U.S. Um, withdrew its recognition of Taiwan or failed to recognize Taiwan as a separate country. And that has remained in place. So why don't we just recognize Taiwan as a country? What's holding us back? Uh, because the U.S. policy is to support the status quo. The status quo is this kind of um, de facto independence. Um, if the United States um, 
should recognize Taiwan, it would set off all kinds of alarm bells in China, and China would probably attack Taiwan. So the, the alarm bells would be because uh, if the U.S. Um, recognized uh, Taiwan, it would the, the message would be we will defend it. it it's part of our, you know, part of our our defense perimeter. But right. isn't it part of our defense perimeter anyway? I mean, is there really a difference uh, in terms of the U.S. commitment to, to Taiwan, whether they rec whether the U.S. recognizes it or not? Why would that make such a difference? Well, because uh, it's important to not see Taiwan in isolation. Taiwan is part of East Asia. We have allies in the area, Japan, South Korea, Philippines now. Um, and we always want to uh, improve our relationship with Southeast Asia. If uh, Taiwan uh, fell to, the, to China, and we didn't do anything about it. Um, it would uh, be a, a negative mark against American credibility. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe that Washington would let Taiwan fall. Saudi Arabia has oil. China has rare earths. China has, you just mentioned it, TSMC, semiconductors. And it's also been a very good friend of the United States. Well, yes, it has. Uh, it's been loyal. It's like um, kind of our child in, in many ways. You know, we adopted it in the days of Chiang Kai-shek, and we have been at least um, articulating support for it all this time. Um, and uh, TSMC is very important in terms of uh, its ability to serve the world with chips. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, I have a mixed reaction to Joe Biden's um, what is it? It's a it's a it's a support um, package that would allow TSMC to build a huge chip plant in the United States, and and there's right. reasons for that. And I think in Arizona, is it there's reasons right. for that. Um, the, but you know, it's a good idea for us, the U.S., to manufacture chips here, and this is the most sophisticated chip manufacturing company in the world. So it's great to have them here with us. But, and you know, and I, it sounds like the strategy is um, that if, if Taiwan falls, uh, at least we will have this huge plant that Joe Biden is incentivizing in Arizona so we don't lose the benefit of a supply line of chips. And it's all good. But it also seems to suggest that, um, that we recognize the possibility that one day Taiwan will fall, no? Well, it depends upon who the leader is in uh, Washington. Uh, if it's Biden, I, I think that uh, the U.S. would come to Taiwan's uh, rescue. But if it's Trump or some other leader, I'm not quite sure. Trump um, has indicated that Taiwan is dispensable. He, he uh, made the um, uh, observation to John Bolton that, look at Taiwan. Taiwan is the tip of my sharpie. And China is the um, president's desk. I've never seen the president's desk, but I assume it's big. <laughs> Not too late for you to run. We need you in Washington, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I mean, uh, there you go. That's, that's a pretty 180 uh, degree difference in their platforms on on Taiwan. Another another reason not to vote for Trump, um, because it would, it would, as you said, it would undermine American interests if we lost them or gave them up. But you know, Trump is an isolationist, and so if you look at you know the whole notion of isolation, unfortunately, he is. Uh, uh, Make America great again. America is great because it has relationships, well-developed relationships with several countries around the world. Yeah, I worry and, about and that. And Trump all uh, seems to want to ditch that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about how the uh, how the people of Taiwan feel about it. I mean, they're all ethnic Chinese. It's a Chinese place. 
Um, and, 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 you know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, whoa. all right, okay. What? <laughs> There's a growing sense of Taiwanese identity. The, the distinction is to uh, be Taiwanese versus Chinese. I spent two years in Taiwan, and I always ask somebody when I met them, are you Chinese or Taiwanese? And most of the time, the answer was Taiwanese. There was some hem and a hauling. Well, I was, I came to Taiwan as a Chinese, but I've been here a long time, so I guess I'm a Taiwanese, or at least a, a combination of both. But um, polling shows that there's a growing sense of uh, Taiwan identity. Well, that's and, good. Uh, we want that. We want that, don't we, from a geopolitical point of view? Right, right, right. And I, I think that Taiwan has a separate culture from uh, China. Uh, it has a mar it's a maritime culture. It's been uh, greatly uh, benefited by immigration. Immigration is a kind of a dirty word to say nowadays. Um, no, but I'm um, really interested. So you're saying there are people who are immigrating, migrating to Taiwan. So it's it's not just no, uh, no. Over the years, um, Taiwan has benefited by a lot of immigration. They also benefited by Japanese colonialism, which seems like a non sequitur. Um, but the relationship between uh, Japan and Taiwan is very, very good. Um, and uh, I lived in Japan for eight years. And I can pick up the, the um, uh, Japanese influences around Taiwan. Hmm. Is, is it, does that mean to say that uh, I know Japan and Taiwan are close? And I, I guess the reason is that Japan sees Taiwan, as we do, as a strategic ally, not too far away. Is that the reason that Japan uh, would support uh, Taiwan? And would it support Taiwan if China attacked? That's an open question, but let me back up and answer the first part of your comment. Um, China, uh, Japan, and Taiwan are in a very close relationship. When I've interviewed in um, uh, mainland Chinese mainland think tanks, uh, I've asked this question: How about the relationship between China and uh, between Japan and Taiwan? It's very, very close. Your Japan is building its military. Um, right. And it is spending money. It, is, uh, it certainly has great technology. It's using this technology. And this is all in the face of, of the threat of China. I mean, of course, you know, Japan wants to have diplomatic relations with China. They want to have trade and whatnot. Um, but they're still building their military because they see China, I guess, as a threat. Well, if they see China as a threat to Japan, uh, of course they see China as a threat to Taiwan. Uh, China is always threatening Taiwan every day. And so it seems to me that the natural um, position of Japan is we want, we want to be close with Taiwan. And furthermore, we, and this is the part I'm asking you about, we will defend Taiwan if necessary. Will Japan defend Taiwan? Um, I'm doing some research on this point right now. Uh, in, in, uh, in Japan in 2014, they had a re, uh, reassessment of the Constitution, especially Article 9. And in 2015, they passed the uh, Peace and Security Law, uh, which says that it's kind of iffy. Um, it's not real clear. It's, it's a little bit um, um, it's a little bit unclear. It, it's a little bit ambiguous, I should say. But if um, China attacks a country with which that J Japan has a close relationship, then the GHI, the, the Self Defense Force, can come to Taiwan's rescue. Mm. If, but they, they met, uh, the law also mandates 
that um, the GHI or the self defense force um, must use the lowest uh, power possible. Mm, well, that's you're right. That's ambiguous, and that it's it sort of allows them a way out. They want a way out. Everybody wants to uh, seek peace before they ever make their point. Anyway, I want to well, go let back. Me, to let me point this out. Uh, I I said I uh, in my previous comments I said that um, Taiwan shields Hawaii. Taiwan shields Japan, especially Okinawa right. and the Senkaku Islands or mm -hmm. in Chinese Ayutai. Um, there's an expression that, that has evolved, uh, a Taiwan contingency is a Japanese contingency. This was pushed out by um, former uh, Prime Minister Abe. So I think it's quite relevant. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention before we go too far is uh, that Taiwan is a robust democracy. Right. Uh, as, oh, as it's democratic very robust. As you, They're very progressive. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean... It's uh, the most progressive country in Asia. How, how, why do you say that? I mean, what happens there that makes it a robust democracy? Homosexuality is legal. Uh, Same-sex marriage is legal. Um, no one thought that a Chinese a, a, a Chinese influenced society could have a robust democracy, but Taiwan has proved the point. Why? Why is that? Did, was the United States uh, involved in in making Taiwan a democracy? Well, under Japanese colonial control, they had. Um, elections at um, lower levels of the government uh, and villages. Um, and this was called the, uh, during the Taisho period of Japanese um, control, of uh, Japanese history. And so I think some of that filtered down. Hmm. Well, I'm really, I think we're getting to the point of uh, looking at Taiwan as a stronghold of democracy in Asia. Um, which the United States, in, you know, wants and enjoys. Um, it, I guess it's sort of like Israel. You want to have democratic government that's your ally. Um, and, right. and Japan, Japan is also a democracy. So I imagine, Bill, that Japan is also pleased as punch to see a democratic government in Taiwan, and it actually helps them in terms of their relationship with Taiwan. Am I right? Correct, correct, absolutely correct. The Japanese uh, admire three things about uh, Taiwan, the economic development, the democracy, and the uh, lifestyle. So it's a middle-class community, a democratic community. It's successful, it's prosperous even. And, you know, if you measure it by TSMC, it's very prosperous. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's done well. It's done well in so many ways, but it's always under the shadow of China. And I remember right. a show on 60 Minutes, uh, uh, maybe six months ago, uh, where they interviewed various uh, people in Taiwan, various levels, you know, business and, and uh, you know, just citizens. Um, and what they got was, Bill, it was complacency. Um, the people were just not all that concerned. Um, they thought things would be fine despite all the threats and the flyovers and, you know, all the uh, provocations that uh, China was putting on Taiwan. Uh, why are they complacent this way? Is that a legitimate complacency? Well, most Westerners I know that care anything about Taiwan are more concerned about Taiwan's future than the Taiwanese themselves. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but but I, I, I want to draw this comparison. People in South Korea, Seoul is only 28 miles from uh, North Korean artillery. And if the uh, North Koreans uh, opened up on, with their artillery on Seoul, Seoul would be pulverized. However, the South Koreans just go on living their life. Um, they don't seem to be 
they, they seem to be somewhat blase about it. I think um, when I was in Vietnam, I, I spent two years in Vietnam, compliments of the U.S. government. I, th I thought, if they get me today, they get me. So you become <laughs> used to it. You live with it. You roll with it. Yeah. It's I'm too not bad saying that. Right. That, that was my mindset after a couple, uh, only being there a couple months. But after a couple months, if they get me, they get me. Hmm. But, how does, but how does that affect things in the end? Because Taiwan, you know, for years, for our whole lifetime, Taiwan has, has said, you know, we have the weapons. The United States has provided the weapons. It's behind us. Um, we will stand strong. We will not let China take over. Um, we will defend ourselves. We, we, we have the, the will and the confidence to do that. But if you find a population that is uh, significantly complacent, um, don't you lose that? Well, yeah, you're, you're uh, hitting upon a, a good point. Um, I sometimes wonder about the Taiwan public's will to fight. All, there's all kinds of polls in Taiwan, most of which I don't think are very credible, um, that suggest that you know, Taiwan, yes, we will fight. I, I, what, what does fight mean? I have often said that the, the question would be better if you wanted somebody to shoot at you and not return fire. <laughs> that was fighting. The other thing that in the 60 Minutes piece was that, yes, the United States is providing weapons um, to Taiwan still. However, those weapons are not First tier weapons. It's not the top of the line technology. It's not the the latest and greatest that the, the Pentagon has has created. Um, They're defensive so weapons. Uh, uh, there's some fear in Washington that uh, Taiwan, if you give them offensive weapons, that they'll uh, use them to attack the mainland. So they're defensive weapons. You think that's true? that the Taiwanese would attack the mainland, 23 million attacking 1.4 million billion? Uh, that's the Pentagon's excuse. Is Taiwan properly armed to defend, or is this all a, a kind of um, make-believe that it is not really prepared to deal with it's the likes of the weapons from China? It's ramping up its military, and, and there's been uh, U.S. trainer, military trainers in Taiwan uh, to enhance the quality and of each in, individual soldier, airman, or sailor. Uh, and the Taiwan uh, government has embarked on a vigorous um, um, war building machine. More, more, more manufacturing. They've just manufactured the first submarine after oh. being turned down by so many countries mm. that uh, they wouldn't sell them Thai, uh, submarines for fear of China's repercussions. Um, and they've built a number of ships. Um, one of my favorites is the uh, what I call the shoot and scoot model. Uh, it's a Corvair that travels at 45 mi on 45 knots per hour, and it's highly maneuverable, and it's built as a carrier killer. On the other hand, there is a kind of a division in the Ministry of National Defense between uh, an asymmetric model and a traditional model. Asymmetric model is something that's pushed by, I, I think, it's Washington think tanks. And they're saying that Taiwan, you can only survive if you use small weapons systems, um, sea mines, drones, that kind of thing. And then there's the traditional model, 
which emphasizes tanks, uh, fighter aircraft, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a kind of a dispute going on within the MNG. My um, analysis is that those both, both those models might be relevant, but they need to be homogenized. They need to be worked into one complete strategy. But uh, in our closing seconds, I'll say this. I don't think that Taiwan or China will attack Taiwan in the next couple of years. First of all, there's corruption in the PLA, the Army, and especially the second um, artillery, the strategic rocket forces. The economy is going poorly, and there's, there's, there's dissension within the party. And if China attacks Taiwan and it's unsuccessful, Xi Jinping is out. He's going to be ganged up on by lots of senior party members, and he's going to be pushed from power. Not, not something that he wants. Hmm. Well, let me ask you one last question, and that is, um, all that considered, Bill, the history mm -hmm. of it, um, the current tensions of it, um, the, the neighboring countries uh, and their policies, what would you advise our State Department to do um, in terms of fashioning an effective policy, a policy that not only protects Taiwan, but that deals with China and that um, uh, allows a meaningful presence of the United States in Asia Pacific? What would you advise the State Department to do in terms of fashioning a policy like for that? Um. Maintain the status quo, build up the uh, uh, military deterrence. Uh, I think that's the way to go. And and individuals, what do you think about individuals visiting Taiwan and investing in TSMC? <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to... For an American, it's easier to buy TSMC stock in uh, the U.S. because in Taiwan, uh, if you buy, if you want to buy TSMC stock, uh, stock, you're uh, you're um, relegated to large quantities. Mm -hmm. Traveling, what what's it like to go there these days? Is it a good experience? Oh, very open, very open. And how's how's the American dollar? Uh, as against the Taiwanese money? Uh, as far as I know, the exchange rate is 30 Taiwan yen or dollars, uh, 30 Chinese dollars to the U.S. dollar. So does that, that mean my, my, my meal, is my meal cheaper or more expensive than it was? Oh, a year or two ta ago? Ta Taiwan is generally considered quite cheap. Hmm, good. Hmm, okay. Well, uh, we wish Taiwan well. We wish you well. Um, we Thank hope you. you'll good experiences and and find um, you know important revelations about Taiwan and how it's doing. <laughs> I never met a Taiwanese I didn't like, as a matter of fact. Uh, and uh, I hope we can get you back on the show, Bill. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Bill Sharp, a, a longtime friend of Big Tech. It's great to have you here. It's a thrill to talk to you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, Please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much.
Aloha.